We're just going to go. All right, welcome, you guys. I'm going to turn the needles off so I can chat a moment regarding our subject matter for today. We are going to be active at first, and then we're going to restore. So I want you to get the blend of both. Um, I already told you the props you need, a strap, blanket, bolster, two blocks. The chairs for someone here that I'm going to demo some alternative options with. Me. So Me. don't worry about the chair. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. And Trish, when you do use the chair, you want all four legs on the mat. Okay. Because otherwise it will slide on the floor <clears throat> and could potentially okay. not be a stable, you know, so. All right, so our subject matter for today is a subject matter that Allison and I actually did our new video on. Um, we've got like three that we haven't published yet. The one that we filmed yesterday was regarding the veil, and we think that we're going to put it up this week. We talk about the veil a little differently than the way I'm going to talk about it today. So expect it to be a little different. But the veil in yoga, we talk about it being the veil of forgetfulness, the veil of illusion, and the veil of ignorance. This veil is even depicted in the sacred symbol of Om. So that sacred symbol of Om, it looks like a calligraphy three, there's a little curly Q out, then there's a crescent moon, and then a dot of envy. That crescent moon represents the veil, the veil of separateness, right? The illusion that um, we think that we're separate from the divine, right? The idea that uh, the seer and the, or the seen and the unseen, there's a veil of separation between the physical world and the spiritual realm, right? The seen and the unseen. So how can we connect to this if we know this exists? So the way we try to break through the veil or dissolve the veil or thin the veil is through these practices that yoga and meditation provides. This is a recipe to help us to cut through that claw so that we can connect to the other side. Now, this veil is said to be really thin this time of year. Think about All Hallows Eve. But the night before Halloween, there's many cultures around the world, not just Mexico, even though we're more prone to think the Mexican culture, but there's other cultures around the world. There's Asian cultures that celebrate this as a way to connect to their ancestors, as a way to connect to their departed loved ones. The veil is thin between the physical and the spiritual. This is a time where we can be more intuitive, a time where we can tap into uh, maybe some extra insights that we haven't gained through the year. Um, this is a time where the veil is said to be thin, right? And we are in that portal right now leading up to 11-11. So this really is an important time. So when we're going through our practice today, think of breaking through that particular veil of illusion, the veil of ignorance, the veil of forgetfulness to remind yourself that you are an infinite soul, to remind yourself you do have soul contracts, that you do have purpose, you do have worth, you do have value in being here. You wouldn't be here if you weren't valued. So when we go through our practice today, we're gonna to do a few exercises that's going to go into a physical veil that we have. This is actually something that can be seen and touched, and that is fascia. Now, the fascia that we're going to focus on in particular is the IT band, because this is in the yin class. If we were in an all yin class, it would be about the fascia all the way through. But the pose is where we're going to be stretching the outseam of the leg. There's a thick band of connective tissue from the hip that goes down to the knee that can get very taut. It can feel that way when we're overactive or when we're underactive. It can also be sensitive because this is the gallbladder meridian in Chinese medicine, and this can correlate back to resentments and angers and frustrations and revenge, you know, things like that that we might experience at a raw, deep level. Um, so that's the concept that we're going for today. With that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start in a pose on our backs. And this is a yin pose. We're going to be taking the over to the right upper corner of the mat. 
The arms are going to lengthen above the head, and we're also going to sway the upper body to the back right corner of the mat. So basically, you're taking the shape of a banana, of the crescent moon. So it's important when we start a yoga practice to begin at some point taking a side bend, taking a side stretch in order to open up the breath, to open up space around the lungs and allow the lungs to expand, to inflate, deflate, so that they can become more purified. If you start to feel again, starting to break. Close your eyes. Begin some mindful breath work. Breathe again. And out through the nose. Noticing where you're experiencing the stretch on the side of the body, or it may be showing up differently in each of us. Perhaps you feel it in the outer hip. Perhaps you feel it more in your waist, maybe in your side ribs, perhaps in your chest or shoulder. On your next inhale, let's go ahead and spread the left limbs away. Roll the head to center like you're creating a star shape. And then slide or walk your right foot over to join your left in the upper left corner of the mat. And then curve the upper body to the left as well. Forming the shape of a crescent moon or the shape of a banana. Ideally, you want both sides of your seat to stay down, both shoulder blades resting down to the back of your head and your hands. Remember, we hold the poses but not the breath, so keep the breath Wide open. Affirming as you hold strength and courage is feeling up my body center. On your next in breath, slide your right limbs over, let your head roll back to center. And then find your strap. Walk the feet closer together once your strap's in hand. Bring your right knee towards you. If your strap is looped, it's okay to loop it around the sole of the foot. If it's not already bound that way, it's okay. Just take the strap around the ball of the foot and then hold both ends of the strap with your hands. This is a supine variation of Padagusasana A. You're tilting that right leg towards you to find your edge of flexibility. Pausing when you feel the work of the hamstrings and calf muscles. Pushing up through the right heel, 
straightening out through the left leg as well. Been flexing that foot. Stay invested in your breath. And I'll take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Use your left hand to hold down the left hip and begin to open the leg to the right. Let that foot hover. Put a little additional flexion in your ankles. Try not to tilt the pelvis. How do you to the be? Loosening your grip or drawing the foot in towards the right shoulder dependent upon where your edge of flexibility resides here. We moved into a different muscle group. From Padmasana B, inhale, lift that leg back over your body. Take your left hand up to hold the strap and allow the leg to angle across your midline, across your belly, but stay anchored on your low back. Push the mound of the big toe into the strap. Splay the rest of the toes nice and long. Maybe see if the leg can lower slightly more without taking the twist. Keeping the sacrum anchored to your mat. And this is that IT band stretch. We'll be doing several poses that's gonna work this region today. Inhale, lift the leg back up. <laughs> Take up in the knee, remove that foot. Slide your right leg out. Bring your left knee in. Take the strap around the ball of the left foot. Sailing it up. Grounding the back of your right thigh. Pushing out through both heels. Let the muscles warm up. Let the static cold reduce any held tension. Let it open up blood flow. Now let's take both ends of the strap into the left hand. Have your right hand hold down the right hip and sail that leg over to your left side. The foot should still hover above the floor. Loosening the grip if it's too much for the inner thigh or pulling that foot towards your left shoulder if you can do more. Only you can determine, so use that layer of discernment in your mind. Slow, deep, yogic breath. Then inhale, lift that leg overhead. Swap hands to hold the strap. Send it across your midline. So a veil can be you know, a barrier, a boundary. Sorry about that. I 
And then see if you can play your edge of flexibility. Maybe it loosens enough for you to carry it over just slightly more. Again, we're not taking the twist, we're staying down on the low back. The reason why I was calling the fascia a veil is because if you were to take this layer of skin off the body, you wouldn't be able to see the organs and the skeletal system. There's an overlay of fascia over everything. Veiling what lies below. As above, so below. Inhale, bring this leg back up. Use your hands to remove the strap from the foot. Send the strap to the side. Bend both knees, but separate your thighs wide. Come into the stirrup or tree frog pose. So the legs are wide open. You're just holding your knees or shins. If this is too much for your knees, you can hold the back of your thighs. Your feet are relaxed. Let your shoulders relax. And then on your in-breath, turn your head over towards the right shoulder. And as you exhale, turn it over to the left. Inhale, head turning to the right. Exhale, turning to the left. And just massage the face of the skull here. Inhale to the right. Exhale over to the left. And the next time you come back together, draw the knees together, lower down to your right side body. We're slowly going to come up to stand. When you come up to stand, bring your strap. Again, don't worry if the loop's there, it's all right. Am I slow good enough today? <laughs> Spread the toes out nice and wide. We're on the base of your feet. Hold the strap pretty wide. And as you inhale, you're gonna lift the arms up overhead. And as you exhale, you're gonna start to bring the arms back, but when you get stuck, widen your grip to the point where you can lower the strap down towards the buttocks. All right, inhale, lift the strap back up, and then exhale down in front. Good, again, inhale, bring it up. Don't make it too easy. Don't make it too hard. Find that just right position where you feel the work. Good, inhale, bring it up, and exhale, lower down in front. All right, using your right arm, Inhale, lift just your right arm, cross it overhead, down towards the buttocks. Same side, right hand lifts, cross it over and back in front. Left side, left arm lifts, cross it overhead, down towards the sacrum. Lifting it back up and bring it around in front. We're going to do it again to the right. Inhale, pick up the right hand. Exhale, circle it behind your back. Stay to the right. Inhale, right arm lifts. And exhale, comes out in front. Left side. Inhale, left arm lifts. Exhale, take it around behind your back. Inhale, left arm lifts. And then exhale, back down. Move that strap and all to the side. Continue to stay grounded in your feet and also form through your legs. Lift your right arm and then start to turn your body towards the windows. Stay in the twist and lower the arm down. Good. Now inhale, take the right arm towards the back wall. Lift it back up alongside your ear. Turn back to face the front and lower it down. Inhale, left arm lifts. Exhale, turn to your left and then lower the arm. Good, stay in the twist. Inhale, sit your left arm back. Elevate it up. Turn back to face me and lower the arm. We're going to do that one more time to the right. Inhale, right arm lifts. 
Exhale, rotate right, and then lower the arm. Good, inhale, pick up that arm, stretch it to the back wall, up towards the sky, and then lower down in front. One more to the left. All right, now we're gonna focus back on the IT band. So I want you to bring the chair. So bring your chair. Have the seat facing you. And the rest of us are gonna have our blocks right in front of the mat, shoulder distance apart. So you're gonna stand back away from your props and you're gonna have your left foot kind of stack a few inches behind in the middle, okay? And then you're gonna cross the right foot over to the opposite side. Good. Your ankle's bandaged up, is it okay? Yeah, I'm gonna chin my down a little bit. You okay? Yeah. Do you need a chair? No, for stability? Okay. All right, so find your weight. You're evenly distributing the weight between each foot. Your hands are gonna stack to your waist. You're gonna lift the chest up. All right, on your out breath, you're gonna hinge forward, take your time. After you hinge forward, you're gonna lower the hands to the blocks. Trisha, you will use the chair. Now walk the blocks out so that you feel like your tailbone's pushing to the wall behind you, your heart is shining forward, and the blocks are stacked underneath the shoulders. Good, we're not done. We're gonna shift the weight to the inside of the left foot towards the mound of the big toe, inner arch, your heel. So there's barely any weight in your right foot. Okay, did it, you're on the other side. So you'll do the other foot. Yeah. So when you're rolling towards the big toe mound on the left foot, you can also bend your elbows to drop down. If you don't need the block, you can bring your hands closer to your feet and bow more towards your lower body. Now that's not good for me today because of my allergies, sinuses. So if you're experiencing the same, you're going to want to be level, head level to heart. You feel the IT band stretch? Mm -hmm. All right, now walk your hands back to the blocks, lengthen out through the vertebrae if you were four and down. Shift your weight back to your right foot so it's more evenly distributed so that your hands can come to your waist and you can cautiously come back to stand. And then uncross the ankles. Now set your right foot in the center. Step your left foot over and across. Lift up your navel, lift up your heart. Exhale, hinge from your hips. Tailbone back, crown forward. Hands dripping down to the blocks. Maybe this is where you need to stay. But shift your weight now to the inside of your right foot. Take less weight in your left foot. If you want to go deeper, maybe bending the arms, lowering your head and heart, or going more into the forward fold. See what's in your wheelhouse today without force. Remember, we want to practice in a kind, compassionate nature with our bodies. Come back to the blocks. Lift up halfway. Shift your weight onto both feet first before you come up to stand. And then uncross the ankles. Now have your feet hip distance apart, hands to prayer position. Inhale, circle the arms overhead. Maybe come to upward worship if that's not a strain for your neck or shoulders. Exhale, come straight down to the blocks again. When you come to stack on the blocks, we're going to keep the legs straight initially. So power down through the feet, straighten out through your leg bones, shine the heart forward. 
And now bend your left knee in a very generous way. Keep your right leg elongated. And again, feel that IT bend stretch. You can be here propped up on blocks or you can let the hands go and bow more. Yogi's choice. Sometimes it can be quite surprising how tight these bands can get. All right, walk your hands forward back to blocks. Keep your left knee bent, right leg straight. And we're going to sweep that right arm out and up towards the heavens. Now we propped up on blocks so we can extend the spine. You want the spine extended before you rotate into the twist to lubricate all those spongy discs in between. Fan the fingers on the upper hand. If it strains the neck to gaze that direction, you can just gaze towards the side wall. Exhale, bring the right hand down. Three straight both legs like a half or Ardha Uttanasana. And now bend your right knee in a very generous way, but keep your left leg straight. We're pausing and staying here for now. If you want to drift down lower with your upper body, you can, or you can stay modified. You can notice the variation between the right and the left sides. If you dropped all the way down, prepare for the twist by stacking back to blocks, elongating the vertebrae. And when you're ready, spin that left arm out and up towards the head. Gazing up or to the side, keeping the breath alive and well. Exhale, let's bring that left hand down. Let's re straighten and structure both legs. And then you're going to continue to use your um, chair, okay? okay? With the sun south. The rest of us root down to the soles of the feet, sweep the arms to your sides and up overhead. Come back to upward worship. And we're going to flow here. As you exhale, swan dive forward and down to your Uttanasana. Now you are welcome to come halfway up with your hands to your shins or your hands to your blocks. But if you want to use blocks for this first pose, bring them alongside your ankles, because we're going to step back with the left foot. So Trisha, your hands will be on the chair, but your right knee is lunging towards the chair and your left leg is back. And the rest of us are on blocks, or hands to floor. So press down through the right foot, make sure that knee is facing the smaller toes, plug up to your back thigh bone. And then when you're ready, slowly begin to straighten out your front leg. Good. when you start to straighten out your front leg, make sure your left hip point is spinning and facing the front of the roof. You got it. From here, keep your head up. We're not folding down. We're lengthening the right arm in front of us. And then we're slowly going to clockwork it up towards the sky. So it's a variation of revolving triangle. And targeting that IT band. Your right hand, if it's troubling to the shoulder, can also rest on your hip. Good. As you exhale, bring that right hand back down. Lunge that knee. Move the blocks away. And not for you, Trish, keep your hands on the chair. We're going to plant the palms and slide the right foot through so that we're gaining this IT band stretch in plank pose. Yeah, so your hands are down. The right foot is under the body. You're on the knife edge side of the foot, the pinky toe side. 
And now step the right foot back, plank. Good, front plank, shift forward, lower down through your Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, rise to upward facing dog. So you can do up dog from the chair trip by bringing your hips towards the chair and lifting the heart up. Yep, and then exhale, everybody come back to downward facing dog. You will be stacked on your palms. Good, from Adho Mukha be here. Breathe here. Let your head be angled in between the upper arm bones. Sail your seat side. Affirming calmness can radiate in every fiber of my being. Now, if you're using the chair, stepping your left foot forward. If you need to come down your knees to find your blocks, if you're doing it without the chair, step your left foot forward, tuck your back toes, start in the lunge. That's the way we started the other side. It'd be a little smoother transition this way. Press through the left foot, front shin perpendicular to the floor, back thigh tucking up towards the sky. And when you're ready, slowly straighten out the front leg. Focus on your right hip point and turn it slightly towards the front of your mat. Instead of dumping down, keep your spine elongated. Reach the left arm forward and slowly clockwork it up towards the sky. Revolving triangle. Allowing energy and joy to flow down to you. Exhale, let's bring the left hand down. We're gonna lunge that knee to move the blocks out of the way. And Trisha, stay on the chair. Same idea that we did before, that left foot's gonna slide through underneath the belly to the opposite side on the ninth fifth side of the foot. You're looking down and breathing well. And then bring that left foot back, plank. Exhale, take another vinyasa, shifting forward, lower down to Chaturanga. Inhale, bloom up to upward facing dog. Exhaling, rock and roll back to downward facing dog. Good, from downward facing dog, let your head be relaxed between the arms. And when you're ready, gently come down to your knees. Trisha, you're not going to come to your knees. You're going to stay up and you're going to turn the chair to face me. The rest of us are going to keep the legs extended in front of us. We're going to bend the right knee and open from the hip. You just go ahead and sit in the chair and I'll show you what to do in just a minute. Your right foot is to the inside of your left thigh. Your left foot's flex, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, come to Janusha Shasana. And so Trish, for you in the chair, you're gonna be sitting at the edge, towards the edge. Right knee stays bent, your left leg will straighten. Flex the heel, hold the seat, and fold over. That's gonna be your Janusha Shasana, okay? I'm keeping you in a chair for a reason. Because <laughs> we're going to get to something deeper in a minute. And you'll want the chair, trust me. All right, everyone, inhale, let's come up. Let's lift the right knee, straighten out back side, bend the left knee, open up the neck, hip, reach the arms overhead, exhale, pour it down. And then for you, Trish, I would hold the seat of the chair. Yeah, that's it. Okay. 
Inhale, let's come up. Have your strap close by just in case you need it. Sail that right foot away for a moment. And I want you to relocate this left shin in front of you so it's parallel to your chest. Now bend your right knee. You with me so far? Okay, pick up the right foot. See if you can cross it over, and I'll give you instruction in just a moment, Trish. Uh, see if you can stack that right foot on your left knee. If that doesn't work or cooperate, you're going to take the foot on over in front of you so that you still see a triangle here in your lap. Same foot, I'm about to join you. Press down through the fingertips, lift up through your heart. And then exhale, you're going to tip forward and get a nice deep hip stretch. So, Trish, you're going to take, you're going to lean your back to the chair. You're going to pick up your right ankle, stand it over your left knee, come back up to sit. Now, left knee, that was your surgery knee? Mm -hmm. Okay. See if you can fold forward. If you can't, that's okay. Don't worry about it. If it pains you at all when you're folding, you can cup underneath the knee and lift it. It's okay? Yeah. All right, perfect. This can be deep. <sighs> Hopefully, both get that. And inhale slowly back away. Trish, just stay there for a moment. But the rest of us, you might be able to use your left hand to hold the foot and to stretch it out. But some of you may need the strap to loop around the foot in order to stretch it out. Okay? So the legs crossing over the midline. And those of you working here, you can just work with the IT band stretch, or you can extend your right arm, lift the top of the head and rotate into a twist. Now from the chair, if you wanted to do this, you could use a strap or your hand to straighten the leg out best you can, cross it over the other leg. Yeah, use your other hand or strap to hold it. Yeah, now free up the other hand, sit it out in front. Yep, and then twist, you got it. All right, Morgan, pick up your heart and your right arm just a little bit. Yeah. And then exhale, unwind from that twist. And then you can lower that down. Let's slide the legs out, bring it to the other side. So the right shin is going to come in front of us. We'll pick up the left foot, cross it over the right knee. See if that's a possibility. If not, send it on over. No big deal. And then root the fingertips and lift the chest up and hinge forward from your upper body, bowing over your lap, finding your edge. And perfect stretch. Yeah, you just swap sides. So what are we going to do next week when everything gets chaotic and loud and noisy? We breathe. <laughs> and we come back to our yoga. We breathe. We breathe to find our peace, to find our center. And then inhale. Let's come out. All right. We're going to hold the knife that side of the foot. We're going to straighten it out. You can also use that strap. Free up the other hand. Lift up through your vertebrae and then twist and rotate around now to your left. Good. Exhale and line from that rotation. And we're ready to just go. So Trish, you can come out to the floor now. 
All right, so we're going to be using our bolster for this. You may need the blankets folded in half on the opposite side to pad your shoulder or to pad your neck. Because we're going to do the restorative side bend, which looks like this. And I'm going to show you two ways to form your legs. So if you could watch for just a moment. When we're lying over, this is where you can determine if you need this here or here, right? This actually feels more comfortable with the blanket in between the arm and the head. Your knees can be bent, the top arm going overhead, if that's okay for the shoulder. If not, leave it here at your hip. The other formation with your legs is the bottom leg straight down the mat and the top leg angling over to create an L shape. And that can just be a very light, 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 gentle work for the IT band. If you want it, you've already gotten some IT band work. So if you want to leave it out, knees bent and stacked. I don't care which side you lie on, left or right, because it is two sided and will eventually swap. And now that you're coming down to the ground, Getting into slit poses, I'm going to turn the lights down. Soften the muscles of your face and relax your jaw. It's feeling towards gravity. Surrendering to the shape. Really being present in this moment in time. Just observe your breath. Coming and going. Appreciating the breath of life for allowing animation to come through this vessel, body, mind. Discovering you're so much more.
from three more breaths. Bring the right hand down in front of your chest onto the bolster and slide that top leg in, restack and bend both knees, and then slowly peel the head up. Come up, we'll swap sides. We'll turn the body the other direction. Lower out over the bolster. Find what's going to work to support your head and your neck. And then how you're going to form your lower body. Keep it easy, be stacked together. Or creating that L shaped formation with the bottom leg going down the back and the top leg crossing over. And then at last, determining with the top arm, is it possible to display over the ear? Or does it need to rest on your hip? Slow, deep, go deep breath. The breath is powerful enough to thin the veil. The breath is capable of breaking through that barrier to connect us, not only to our higher self, but to feel that connection to the divine. In the Sri Bhagavad Gita, it says the mind is darkened and the eyes are blinded. Which is why we can't see through the veil. The biblical text actually says when you turn to the Lord, you can go beyond the veil. It's not about turning towards anything outside of us. We turn back inside and drop into our heart and tap into our soul. We are reconnected to source. The way is within. So close the eyes and use your breath to go into them.
Take three deep yogi breaths. And then if your legs are in the L-shaped position, restack and bend the knees. Put the top arms overhead. Go ahead and restack that hand on top of the bolster. Lift the head up. Slow. Our final position is going to be a restorative back bend. I want to share a few things with you. So, for instance, you may be completely fine just using a singular bolster. However, we have blankets here. Some of you might like it underneath the knees. If your low back is cranky in this position, you may want to sit on the blanket before rolling across. If you feel like, well, I need it for my head, you can use it under the head like this. And the last thing that I don't mention too much, but uh, sometimes if the shoulders are tight or if someone's really bad from any type of, you know, breast cancer or surgery of some type, you can use these blankets as armrests so that you're not, you know, rolling the arms down so much. And you, of course, would have to be two, one on each side. But that is another way of using the blankets. Does anyone need an extra blanket by chance? This will be our pose for Shavasana. So if you want to cover your eyes with a towel or grab some socks or whatever's going to get you super, super comfy. Take the time to do that. If you're already there, just close your eyes. Mindfully start to relax each portion of the body, starting at your feet, relaxing your toes, the arches, and the ankles of both. And soften the muscles up through each leg. The calves, the knees, the quads and the hamstrings. Bring it to the midsection, relaxing the hips, buttocks, pelvic floor. Relaxing the belly, <coughs> chest. Maybe sensing the wave of the breath. So 
rolls back and forth between these two areas. Softening the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the fingers. Relaxing the neck, your throat, your face. Trying your best to stay present in the now to whatever shows up. But not becoming entangled in anything that doesn't apply to the now or towards anything that may not be in sight. General rambling, observe it, let it go. And continue that process from now to the end.
and deepen the flow of your breath. Once you alive with your breath, go ahead and bend your knees. And just rock and sway them from side to side. Eventually rolling over to your favorite, coming up to take a seat. Let's go ahead and join the palms together in the prayer position of the heart. In light with the be, honors and bows to the beautiful radiant light for each of you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> 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 